Hello, here's the answer key for the uh, Unit 2 uh, progress check multiple choice questions. Okay, so there's 15 of these. So question number one, on the basis of electronegativity differences between atoms, which of the following scientific claims is the most accurate regarding the bonding in MgNO32? Okay, so choice A, there's a polar covalent bond between magnesium and nitrogen. Well, first of all, covalent bonds happen between nonmetals. Magnesium's a metal, so this one's not true. Uh, letter B, there's a polar covalent bond between magnesium atoms and oxygen. Well, again, magnesium's a metal. Covalent bonds happen between nonmetals, so that eliminates uh, B also. There's an ionic bond between N positive 5 ions and O negative 2 ions. Okay, so again, now there was a ionic bond between N positive 5 and O negative 2. Well, N doesn't form positive 5 ions, so this one is not true. So that leaves D. So there's ionic bonded between magnesium positive 2 and these nitrate negative 1. So ionic is between uh, metals and a negative ion. So it's going to be D. Number 2. Which of the following claims about a binary compound in which the bonding is <clears throat> ionic is most likely to be scientifically valid? Okay, so letter A, both elements in the compounds are metals. Well, metals will not go together um, unless you have an alloy or you know metallic bonding, but we're talking about ionic bonding right here. Um, letter B, atomic masses of the elements in the compound are relatively small. We can't tell that from, from this information, uh, so it's not B either. Letter C, there's equal sharing of electrons between the atoms of the elements in a compound. Well, equal sharing of electrons means that uh, that's nonpolar covalent. And again, we're talking about ionic bonds here. The electronegativity difference between the elements in a compound is relatively large. That's the answer right there. It's a D. So between a metal and a non-metal, there's going to be a large difference in electronegativity. Question three, which of the following claims about a binary compound composed of elements with the same electronegativity is most likely to be true? Well, if you have the same electronegativity, you're going to have an equal sharing of the electrons. So that's a nonpolar covalent bond. So that is choice B right there, nonpolar covalent. The other information, A, C, and D, uh, we can't get that from, from this information there. Okay, question number four. So we have a particle diagram right here. This, uh, these are different ions, and they're, they're, they're not in like a rigid structure, so you can tell they're moving around. So it's going to be liquid NaCl because the, the particles are, are moving. If it was solid NaCl, you'd have positive ions surrounded by negative. Um, so we have molten NaCl is represented in the particulate diagram shown above. Which of the following indicates whether NaCl liquid conducts electricity and best explains why or why not? Well, first of all, when you have liquid ionic compounds like we do here, they do conduct electricity. Anytime you have charged particles that are able to move, you can conduct electricity. So now we look at our choices. So A and B, they both say it conducts electricity. So it's going to be one of those two. C and D says it does not conduct electricity. So we can eliminate those two. Um, a, because Na is a metal. Um, and then B, because ions are free to move. It's not about it being a metal. It's because the ions are free to move, which allows it to conduct electricity. So B is our best answer. Okay, question five. So we have a particulate level diagram shown above. Uh, best helps explain which of the following properties of an ionic solid. So here's an ionic solid, positive surrounded by negatives. Um, you don't have like charges that are next to each other. So what happens here, you have a force being applied. So it's displacing these ions. So you get negatives next to each other, positives next to each other. And what happens is they will repel and then they break apart. So that is brittleness. Brittleness means that if you're, they're hit with some force, they tend to break apart, not bend. Malleable means that you can, you can pound it into a thin sheet or you can hit something and it gives, it doesn't break. Brittleness is when you hit something, it breaks, but it doesn't bend. So this is talking about B, brittleness here on this one. 
Question six, the particles in solid Ki, a stable ionic compound, are arranged to maximize coulombic attractions while minimizing coulombic repulsions among the particles. Which of the following, best, uh, which of the following diagrams best represents the structure of solid Ki? All right, so to maximize attractions, we want to have oppositely charged particles next to each other, and we want to keep like charged particles away from each other to minimize coulombic repulsions. So with choice A, we have this right here. We don't have any positives and negatives right next to each other. With B, you have positives next to each other, negatives next to each other, so there's gonna be a lot of repulsion between those. They would separate apart. Same thing in C, positives and negatives are next to each other, and positives and negatives are next to each other. So we want choice A. Okay, question seven. Okay, well, first of all, I hope we recognize this from the notes where this is a metallic solid where you have positive ions surrounded by a sea of electrons. It's the sea of electron models for a, for a metallic bonding. So which of the following indicates whether the solid substance represented by the particular diagram shown above conducts electricity and explains why or why not? Well, again, to conduct electricity, you have to have charged particles that can move. Well, in metallic solids, you have the sea of electrons. They're, they're delocalized electrons. That, that means they don't belong in any one spot. They're free to move around and kind of be shared by the positive ions. So it's going to conduct electricity because electrons are free to move through the substance. That's what metals do. That's a property of metals. So that's letter B for your answer. Number eight, which of the following particulate level diagrams best represents an interstitial alloy? Interstitial alloy is where you're mixing a, a metal with some smaller atom that fits in between the spaces. So A is the correct answer. B represents a substitutional alloy where, where you have two metals of about the same size. C represents an ionic solid. And D is just showing one type of atom. So that would just be a, a pure metal. So A is the correct answer there. Number nine, this is another uh, metallic bonding where you have the electron C between the, the positively charged ions. So the diagram above best illustrates which of the following phenomena associated with solids that have metallic bonding. So it's not showing electrical conductivity. You're, you're applying a force to this and it's showing how it's not breaking. It's just kind of moving with the force. Um, malleability because it shows how adjacent layers of positive ions can move relative to one another while remaining in full contact with the electron C. That's it right there. When you apply force to metallic solids, they just shift around, they move, but they don't break apart because these positive ions stay within that C of electrons. So it's going to be B as your correct answer. Okay, number 10, we have these two Lewis dot diagrams. So which of the diagrams above best represents the CH2O molecule and why? Well, first of all, it, it can't be one because carbon only has six valence electrons in this diagram. Carbon has to have eight. So we know it has to be diagram two. Well, that eliminates A and B right there. Um, diagram two, because the molecule has trigonal pyramidal shape, well, really they, they don't have that. They both have trigonal planar geometry. And then diagram two, because all the atoms have a formal charge at zero. So it's letter D is your correct answer. Um, each hydrogen would be one minus one for zero. Carbon would be four minus four for zero. And the oxygen would be six minus six. So it's all zero. So it's diagram two. Number 11, based on formal charges, which of the following is the best Lewis electron dot diagram for H3NO2? So we want all zeros on this. So we have oxygen has six valence electrons, and it has one, two, three, four, five, six in this structure. So it has zeros. All the, if all the hydrogens have single bonds, they all have um, um, formal charges of zero. So they're all good here. And nitrogen has five valence electrons in the periodic table. And in the structure here, it has one, two, three, four, five. So it also has a formal charge of zero. So um, this has all formal charges of zero, so it's going to be choice A. 
letter B, C, and D, we end up with formal charges that are not zero for oxygen and nitrogen, so it's not going to be those. Okay, question 12. Which of the Lewis diagrams shown above is the most likely structure of CO2 and why? Um, it's going to be the one on the left, diagram one, because um, formal charges again. So each oxygen is going to be zero because you count um, the lone pairs, count towards that atom, and half of the shared pairs. So each oxygen is six minus six, and then carbon has four valence electrons, subtract four from the shared shared electrons. So they have all zeros. In this case right here, diagram two, you do not have formal charges of zero for the two oxygens. So diagram one, because all atoms have a formal charge of zero. So choice A. 13, which of the following Lewis diagrams represents a molecule that is polar? So to be polar, we want to have lone pairs of electrons on the center atom um, and or a lack of symmetry lack of symmetry and, and uh, differences in electronegativity. Now on these Lewis diagrams, instead of dashes, they have just pairs of you know, dots between the two atoms to represent the shared pair. So this is a shared pair, this is a shared pair, this is a shared pair. These are not, that's not lone pairs of electrons on the boron. So this one is symmetrical, so it's going to be nonpolar. Um, this one is symmetrical, so it's also going to be nonpolar. This one does not have symmetry, even though there's no lone pairs on the center atom. The outside atoms are not the same, so this does not have symmetry. And then you have a difference in electronegativity, so this is going to be a polar molecule. These are both the same atom, so it's going to be um, it's going to be a nonpolar. So the answer is C. Okay, which of the following correctly compares the length of the two carbon to carbon bonds in the molecule represented in the Lewis diagram shown above? Okay, so double bonds are stronger than single bonds, and stronger bonds are shorter. So this double bond is stronger and shorter. This single bond is weaker and longer. So we're comparing the, the strength. So the one on the left is going to be a stronger bond. So the carbon carbon bond on the left is stronger because it's a double bond. So it's going to be choice A right there. The carbon to carbon bonds are the same strength. They're not. Double bonds are stronger than single. Letter, uh, letter C, carbon to carbon bonds are the same strength because they're both bonds between carbons. Well, no, they're, the double bonds are stronger. And then this one says the carbon to carbon bond on the right is stronger because there's more hydrogen atoms. That doesn't really have anything to do with it. So um, it's going to be A. Okay, and then the last one, and again, this is another situation where in the Lewis diagram, the dots between the two atoms represent a shared pair, so it's dots rather than a dash. Don't be confused by that. So based on the Lewis diagram for NH3, um, the H and H bond angle is closest to which of the following. So four effective pairs around the nitrogen, that's the, the tetrahedron base geometry. So that's 109.5, or another way to think of it is it's sp3 hybridization, and sp3 has bond angles based on 109.5. It, it would be slightly less than 109.5 because the lone pair would squeeze these hydrogens together, but this is what it's closest to, so C is your answer. Okay, and that's all for the, the progress check. Have a good day.